not every draft pick lives up to the hype. Let me explain. We had Kwame Brown in 2001, Anthony Bennett and Nerland Noel in 2013, and even the 2003 draft had Darko. And while they were still good players, they never lived up to expectations. But what if I told you there's a draft class that is considered to be the worst NBA draft of all time? One where there were only three all-stars and only one all-NBA selection in the whole draft class. You wouldn't believe me, right? Well, that's what actually happened in the 2000 draft. From career-ending injuries to some of the biggest what-ifs in NBA history, let's figure out if this was the worst draft class ever. The New Jersey Nets select Kenyon Martin from the University of Cincinnati. Kenyon Martin, a standout in college basketball, won the 2000 Wooden Award, AP All-American Honors, and many other awards with impressive senior year stats of 18.9 points, 9.7 rebounds, and 3.5 blocks per game. Despite breaking his leg in the last year of college, the Nets made him their first pick. In the NBA, Martin quickly made his mark. He was named Rookie of the Month twice, came second in Rookie of the Year voting, and was selected on the NBA All-Rookie First Team. He took the Nets to the finals in 2002 and 2003, averaging 14 points and 7 rebounds in his early years. His peak season was in the 2003 through 2004 season with averages of 16 points and 9 rebounds leading to his only All-Star appearance. Martin's late career stints included the Nuggets, Clippers, Bucks, and Knicks before retiring in 2015. After his NBA career, Martin transitioned to Ice Cube's Big 3 League. In 2017, he played a pivotal role in Trilogy's undefeated season and later coached in 2020. Martin also made his mark in media, appearing on shows like Undisputed, The Herd, and All The Smoke, and co-hosting Gil Serena, which is actually my favorite podcast to watch right now. But but other than that, basketball runs in Martin's family. His cousin, Robert 50 Martin, gained fame in and one. And his son, Kenyon Martin Jr., is forgoing his own NBA path. In his prior season with Houston, Kenyon Jr. averaged 12.7 points and 5.5 rebounds over 82 games. He also competed in the dunk contest with a little help from his father. The Vancouver Grizzlies select Stromile Swift from Louisiana State University. Stromile Swift, selected second overall by the Vancouver Grizzlies in 2000, originally caught everyone's attention with his amazing dunks at the McDonald's All-American game. He actually jumped from the free throw line and dunked as a high school senior. At LSU, Swift excelled, averaging 16 points, 8 rebounds, and almost 3 blocks and 1.5 steals per game in his sophomore year. His performance at the college level set high expectations for his NBA career. However, Swift's transition to the NBA was challenging. Injuries and inconsistent play plagued his career. Despite showing potential, his best NBA season was in the 2001-2002 through 2002 season where he averaged 11 points and 6 boards per game. In 05, he signed a 4-year, $22 million contract with the Rockets. However, he only played a single season with the team, and in 2006, Swift was traded back to the Grizzlies. Then, Swift went to the Nets and Suns before leaving the league and heading to China to play for the Shandong Lions. After Stromile retired, he returned to his hometown of Shreveport, Louisiana. Despite running into some issues with the law in 2012, Swift has seemingly found peace in Louisiana. According to an interview with Commercial Appeal, he is interested in coaching someday and wants to be a role model for kids in his community. Soon after coming back to his hometown, he started a small trucking company called SS Transports, transporting salt water, landfills, wood chips, and other materials. Is he still running this company today? I don't know. But still, we'll always have his highlights and iconic post-dunk celebrations. The Los Angeles Clippers select Darius Miles of East St. Louis High School. Standing 6'8", Darius Miles was described as a freak athletically when he was only 18. Playing for Lincoln High School, Darius averaged 22 points, 12 rebounds, 7 blocks, all while shooting 66% from the field. Wow. Many scouts compared him with Kevin Garnett, calling him Baby KG. Miles was selected third overall by the LA Clippers and was expected to change the franchise's trajectory that had only made the playoffs four times in the last 25 years. But things just quite didn't pan out as everyone imagined. The fact that he wasn't developing into a Garnett-type franchise player led to his trade to the Cavaliers. After only a year with the Cavs, Miles was traded to Portland. There, he had his best seasons, averaging 12 points, 4 rebounds, along with 1 steal and 1 block per game in 2005. And on April 19th, Miles scored a career-high 47 points and grabbed 12 boards in a game against the Nuggets. And next year, he increased his averages to 14 points per game. Miles' promising career was further hampered by a severe knee injury in 2006, leading to microfracture surgery and a two-year absence from the game. He tried returning with Memphis, but he retired after 34 games at 27. Just six years later, Miles declared bankruptcy. Darius earned nearly $62 million during his career, but made several bad investments. 
leading him to lots of debt. For instance, it is said he lost over $100,000 in a failed 2008 California real estate deal, as reported when he filed for bankruptcy. His liabilities totaled $1.57 million, including substantial debts to the IRS and child support obligations. Additionally, Miles was involved in a failed investment venture in downtown St. Louis, which led to multi-million dollar lawsuits and significant financial loss. His personal life also contributed to his financial woes. He suffered from depression following his mother's death from cancer in 2013, which likely affected his financial decision making. Sadly, his poor investments continued until this day. In 2023, he pleaded guilty to one count of conspiracy to commit healthcare and wire fraud. Yeah, Miles was involved in the healthcare fraud scheme that targeted the MBA's benefits program. But not everything is bad. These days, Miles is known as Half of the Knuckleheads podcast, which is actually one of the most successful MBA podcasts out there. The Chicago Bulls select Marcus Pfizer from Iowa State University. Before joining the NBA, Marcus Pfizer had an impressive college career at Iowa State, where he averaged 23 points and 8 rebounds in his junior year and was named Big 12 Player of the Year. He was selected by the Bulls, and in his rookie season, he managed to score 9 points and 4 rebounds per game, earning himself a spot on the all-rookie second team. In his second year, he improved to about 12 points and 5 rebounds per game, but this progress was short-lived. His third season was destroyed by a significant ACL injury, drastically impacting his performance and hindering his development. He managed to come back, but his stint with the Bulls ended in the 2003 through 2004 season. After that, he played a little for Milwaukee and New Orleans. When he wasn't successful there, he got sent to the D-League. But in his time there, he was named the D-League's MVP in 2006. And he never managed to make it back to the NBA, but he had a successful international career, playing in Spain, Israel, and Argentina until 2015. In 2017, Pfizer became the president of EIBA, the first pro international basketball league that aimed to connect young players from all countries. Their games were attended by NBA scouts, which gave the young guys motivation to play their best and show off their talents. But a quick Google search shows that this league may not be a thing anymore. And doing a little bit more digging, it looks like recently he's been running a company called Slip Guardians, which does what the name says, essentially working with commercial businesses to make sure that people don't slip and sue them. Interesting business. The Orlando Magic select Mike Miller from the University of Florida. You may know Mike Miller as the one guy that played with LeBron and knocked down a three-pointer missing his shoe. <laughs> but Mike was much more than that especially at the beginning of his career. At the University of Florida, under Billy Donovan from 98 to 2000, he averaged 13 points per game with the solid shooting stats. Selected fifth overall by the Orlando Magic, Miller quickly made an impact, winning Rookie of the Year with averages of 11.9 points, 4 rebounds, and 1.7 assists per game. Interestingly enough, his point average is the fourth lowest among all Rookie of the Year award winners in NBA history. Though initially pegged as a potential star, Miller's role evolved alongside Tracy McGrady, leading him to become a renowned three-point shooter. Over 17 seasons, he maintained an impressive 40.7% three-point shooting rate. His best years were with the Grizzlies, where he averaged 13 points and won the Sixth Man of the Year award in 06, becoming the most decorated player of his draft class so far. He finished his career off as a role player. That's what most people know him for. His role as a spot-up shooter is what helped him win two rings with the Heat. After his amazing 17-year NBA career, Miller transitioned to becoming an agent. In 2020, he founded Lyft Sports Management, representing players like Wendell Carter, CJ Albi, and notably the first pick of the draft, Paolo Bencaro. And I sit down at my table, and then Mike uh, Miller, my agent's there, and he's just like, you know, we got action. Like, I think the Magic front office was like, Apollo's a pick. Bencaro, who Miller signed early in 2022, was declared the 2023 NBA Rookie of the Year after averaging more than 20 points per game. He became only the third player to win the award after Shaq in 93 and his agent Miller in 2001. Yeah, Mike Miller's career has definitely come full circle. The Atlanta Hawks select DeMar Johnson of the University of Cincinnati. DeMar Johnson was a Parade High School Player of the Year, a McDonald's All-American, and later the sixth pick in the NBA draft. During his time at the University of Cincinnati, he averaged like 12 points and 4 rebounds per game as a freshman. That single season was enough for him to become a lottery pick. In his rookie season with the Atlanta Hawks, he posted averages about 5 points and 2 rebounds per game, which improved slightly in his second year to 8 points and 3 rebounds per game. The biggest setback for Johnson came in 2002, just two seasons into his NBA career, when he was involved in a serious car accident. This accident resulted in a spinal cord injury that nearly left him completely paralyzed and sidelined him for the entire 2002 through 2003 season. Johnson made a heroic comeback to the NBA, but the Hawks no longer saw him as the franchise player they once believed in. 
As DeMar reflected in the 2023 interview, I went from being looked at as he's going to be the next franchise player for our team to hold up. After his NBA career ended, he continued to play professionally in various countries. In 2017, he joined the Cincinnati staff as a student assistant coach while completing his undergrad degree. And as of recently, DeMar has joined the University of Cincinnati men's basketball staff as the director of player development. Good for you, Chief. The Chicago Bulls select Chris Mim from the University of Texas. Chris Mim, born in Milwaukee and a high school standout in Austin, Texas, became an All-American at the University of Texas. As of today, he ranks first on the all-time blocks list, second in double-doubles, and fourth in rebounds at his old university. Mim had a mediocre career in Cleveland, mostly coming off the bench for most of his time there. In 2003, he was traded to the Boston Celtics along with Ricky Davis and helped them make the playoffs in 04. But then, in August 2004, Mim was traded to the Los Angeles Lakers, where he played for four seasons. Mim had his best season in the 2005-2006 through 2006 season, averaging 10 points and 6 rebounds, although the Lakers struggled during this period. But Lakers fans also remember him for his fight with Mbenga in practice. Yeah, good times. Mim was eventually traded to the Memphis Grizzlies in 09, but injuries caught up to him, and he decided to retire. After retiring from basketball, Mim returned to Austin, Texas and completed his degree in 2012. He graduated with a psychology major and a communications minor, and Texas honored him during a 2018 game against Ole Miss. The Cleveland Cavaliers select Jamal Crawford from the University of Michigan. Jamal Crawford was definitely one of the most well-known names coming out of the 2000 NBA draft. In one of many redrafts, Yahoo Sports actually positioned Jamal Crawford as the best player to come out of this draft. Starting as the eighth pick is a testament to his evolution from a one-dimensional player to a highly respected figure in the league. Crawford scored over 10,000 points off the bench and won the sixth man of the year award three times yeah, a record he shares with Lou Williams. Crawford's early years with the teams like the Bulls and Knicks saw him as a high volume scorer, but it was his role as a sixth man, especially with the Atlanta Hawks and later the Los Angeles Clippers, where he truly shined. In his hometown of Seattle, Crawford is celebrated for organizing elite basketball matches and running the Crossover League, a program summer league that's become a stepping stone for some local athletes. These games, featuring NBA stars like Chris Paul and Kevin Durant, are free for the public, highlighting Crawford's commitment to community and basketball development. These days, you can catch Jamal on TNT, where he works as an analyst. And in 2021, he started doing game broadcasts for NBA's League Pass alongside a guy we'll talk about later, Quentin Richardson. The Houston Rockets select Joel Prisbilla from the University of Minnesota. Now say it with me, Prisbilla. Yeah, that's how you say the dude's name, but I'll just call him Joel from now on. Joel began his NBA career when he was selected as the ninth overall pick in the 2000 NBA draft by the Houston Rockets, but was traded to the Bucks on draft night. He played for the Bucks for over three seasons before being traded to the Atlanta Hawks during the 2003 through 2004 season. After the season ended, he signed with the Portland Trailblazers. In Portland, Joel established himself as a solid defensive presence. He played for the Trailblazers from 2004 to 2011, and then was actually traded midseason to the Charlotte Bobcats. The most interesting thing about Joel, I know too, he had a 26 rebound game once and once had a near altercation with the late great Kobe Bryant. Not much is known about Joel's personal life outside the NBA, but he's been happily married to Noel for over 20 years. The couple has two sons, Anthony and Jaden, and the two sons are also playing basketball. The Orlando Magic select Keon Dooling of the University of Missouri. At the University of Missouri, Keon Dooling established himself as a promising talent. His performance led the Tigers to two NCAA tournament appearances. And because of that, Dooling was selected 10th overall by the Magic, but he was traded to the Clippers right away. Throughout his NBA career, Dooling played for several teams, including the Heat, Magic, Nets, Bucks, and Celtics, before ending his playing career with the Grizzlies over a decade ago. He averaged around seven points and two assists per game, but he also served as the first vice president of the National Basketball Players Association. Off the court, Dooling faced significant personal challenges. In 2012, he suffered from PTSD and was institutionalized for a period. He disclosed his experiences as a survival of childhood sexual abuse and has been open about his struggles with mental health. After retiring from basketball, Dooling transitioned to a role in player development, joining the Utah Jazz as a player development coach in 2020. However, his coaching career faced a setback when he was placed on administrative leave following the arrest on fraud charges. In 2023, Keon Dooling and Alan Anderson, an eight-year NBA veteran, were sentenced to 30 months and 24 months in prison respectively for their involvement in a scheme to defraud the NBA player's health and welfare benefit plan. The scheme was orchestrated by co-defendant Terrence Williams and Dooling and Anderson both had managerial roles in the scheme. Williams provided fake invoices from a chiropractic office and dental offices, claiming that Dooling, Anderson, and other defendants had received expensive medical and dental services when they had it. The Boston Celtics select Jerome Moiso. 
Jerome Moyoso was a French player who got his start at UCLA playing for the Bruins. Jerome did pretty good there, averaging 13 points, about 8 rebounds, and almost 2 blocks per game as a sophomore. Not much happened here, but Moyoso played for several teams in the NBA, including the Celtics, Hornets, Raptors, Nets, and Cavaliers. After the NBA, he played in Europe until 2013 for major teams like Real Madrid and Bialbo. There's not a lot of information out there about Jerome's post-basketball career. We just know that after playing in the Puerto Rico League, he stopped playing and being connected to the game of basketball in any major capacity. So if any of my French viewers, and I know you guys exist, know what happened to Jerome, let me know in the comments below. Dallas Mavericks select Etan Thomas from Syracuse University. During his time at Syracuse, Thomas was known for his defensive play so much that he was named the Big East Defensive Player of the Year in back-to-back -back seasons. And his best moment was winning the Big East regular season championship in his senior year. So with all that being said, the Mavericks picked him as their 12th pick in the draft. However, he missed his rookie season due to a toe injury and was later traded to the Washington Wizards, where he spent two years playing with the post-second retirement Jordan. But some serious medical issues popped up for him in 2007, and he had underwent open heart surgery to fix his medical condition. And thankfully, he returned to play for the Wizards in 2008. But by then, he wasn't the same. Thomas was later traded to the Oklahoma City Thunder and the Atlanta Hawks where he played his final season in the NBA. Since his career is over, Thomas has used his platform to speak out on issues like police brutality and racism. Thomas even published a book on police brutality and currently writes a monthly column for The Guardian. The Orlando Magic select Courtney Alexander from Fresno State University. Alexander was drafted by the Magic in 2000, but he was traded to the Mavericks on draft day. He played for the Mavericks during his rookie season before being traded to the Washington Wizards. However, after three short seasons, his career came to an abrupt end. He suffered a tear of his Achilles tendon in 03 while playing for the New Orleans Hornets. After rehabilitating his injury, he signed with the Sacramento Kings, but was released due to an injury to his left foot. While Alexander had some decent seasons, he struggled with consistency after his injury. In a 2020 interview with BasketballNews.com, Alexander admitted that his focus on style and fame overtook his dedication to the game, ultimately affecting his performance and career longevity. The injuries Alexander sustained over his career led him to reevaluate his priorities. He co-founded CJA Sports, a consulting firm that addresses issues such as athlete entitlement, the treatment of young athletes by coaches and parents, and domestic violence in SA. It is reported that Alexander serves as a consultant for the NBA and MBPA and works as the development and outreach associate for Breakthrough Atlanta, but that's not it. He is also a college basketball TV analyst and a manager at an independently owned Anytime Fitness Gym in Mableton, Georgia. The Detroit Pistons select Martin Cleaves from Michigan State University. Mateen Cleves spent his four years from 96 to 2000 playing for the Michigan State Spartans, and he became a key player in helping them win the NCAA championship in 2000. And for all his hard work, he was named the most outstanding player of the 2000 NCAA tournament. So with that, the Pistons took him with their 14th pick. And for his career, he ended up playing for the Pistons, Sacramento Kings, Cleveland Cavaliers, and Seattle Supersonics. And after playing a few years in Russia and Greece, Cleves called it quits. Following his basketball career, Cleves transitioned to the broadcasting industry. He worked as a studio analyst for Fox Sports Detroit and as a CBS sports commentator. He also became a motivational speaker and eventually took on a role as a leadership coach at United Wholesale Mortgage, which is a mortgage company based in Pontiac, Michigan. The Milwaukee Bucks select Jason Collier from Georgia Tech University. He was selected by the Milwaukee Bucks, but was traded to the Rockets on draft day. He played for the Rockets and the Atlanta Hawks during his career, averaging about 5.6 points per game and 2.9 rebounds per game. While his play on the court wasn't spectacular, his story actually ends really tragically. On August 15th, 2005, Collier passed away at the young age of 28 due to a sudden heart rhythm disturbance caused by enlarged heart. The Hawks honored him by wearing permanent black shoulder patches on their uniforms, and the NBA Development League introduced the Jason Collier Sportsmanship Award in his honor. And in 2018, he was inducted into the Ohio Basketball Hall of Fame. The Sacramento Kings select Hidiet Turkoglu, who plays for the Efes Pilsen team in Istanbul, Turkey. Hido's professional journey started with FS in 1996, leading FS to the 2000 EuroLeague Final Four. And in 2001, he became the first Turkish-born player to enter the league. And with that, he quickly adapted to the NBA's playing style, earning a spot on the all-rookie second team. After a short stint with the Spurs, Hedo was traded to the Magic, where he spent the best years of his career. He was named the NBA's most improved player of the 2007-2008 season, and the following year, his performance also helped the Magic reach the NBA Finals. Over the next five years, he played for the Raptors, Suns, Magic again, and Clippers. And in 2014, he retired from the NBA. Post-retirement, Turkoglu took on the role of president of the Turkish Basketball Federation, focusing on developing the sport in Turkey. Oh, and he also gave JJ Redick a black eye during practice, and wanted to pee on him during a rookie hazing. 
yeah, do with that information what you will. The Seattle Supersonics select Desmond Mason from Oklahoma State University. Dunks, dunks, and more dunks. That's what Desmond Mason is and will stay remembered for. Mason played four years at Oklahoma State University. After getting drafted, he started his career with the Supersonics. He played a good three years there before he was traded to the Bucks in a trade that sent Ray Allen to the Supersonics. Mason then spent two and a half years in Milwaukee, averaging his career high of 17.2 points per game in the last season with the team. In subsequent years, he played for the New Orleans Hornets, Oklahoma City Thunder, and Sacramento Kings. But as injuries piled up, his efficiency and point averages dropped. He played his last game in 2009. Aside from his basketball career, Mason is actually a surprisingly talented artist. He does a lot of oil painting, acrylic painting, watercolors, and ceramics, and also helped paint a series of murals in Milwaukee following the Bucks championship a few years ago. Select Quentin Richardson from DePaul University. We've finally come to the second half of the Knuckleheads podcast. Quentin Richardson. Unlike his co-host Darius Miles, who jumped to the league straight from high school, Q Rich played college ball for DePaul University. And during his college career, Q became the first and only player in DePaul's history to score over 1,000 points, 500 rebounds, and make 100 three-point field goals. Just like Darius, Richardson was drafted by the Clippers. With that, he was basically known for his long-range shooting during his time in the league, and would become a great role player for teams like the Clippers, the Suns, the Knicks, and several other teams. Like many other players from this draft class, in his post-NBA days, Q Rich found a home in the Big 3 League. Playing for power in 2018, Richardson won the Big 3 Championship as a key rotational player for the team. And most importantly, along with his close friend and draft classmate, Darius Miles, Q started a podcast called Knuckleheads. After being approached by the Players' Tribune, they wanted to make listeners feel like they were eavesdropping on players' conversations. And the show has become pretty popular and has had featured guests like Kobe Bryant, Allen Iverson, and KD. The Charlotte Hornets select Jamal Beglore from the University of Kentucky. These days, you usually hear about Jamal Beglore when someone talks about the most surprising all-star selections in NBA history. Born and raised in Toronto, Beglore attended ECCI, where he led the school's basketball team to back-to-back -to -back provincial championships in 95 and 96. And as a high school senior, he wrote that his dream was to play for the Raptors. Well, in college, he was only making those dreams become more true, where he won a national championship in 98. Well, it wasn't Toronto that drafted him. However, the Hornets did decide to pick him up with the 19th pick. It took him a second, but in the 2003 through 2004 season, he had the season of his life. McGlure averaged 13.6 points and about 10 rebounds per game, all while playing 82 games. That year, he was voted into the NBA All-Star Game in 2004, becoming the second Canadian All-Star in NBA history after Steve Nash. He went on to have a relatively successful NBA career as a role player, even fulfilling his dream by signing a one-year contract with the Raptors in his last season, becoming the first Canadian center to play for Toronto. After retiring, McGlure joined the team as a basketball development consultant and community ambassador. Fulfilling another goal he had, in 2021, he was hired as vice president and senior advisor for the Scarborough Shooting Stars. Yeah, that same Canadian team that J. Cole played for. The Philadelphia 76ers select Craig Speedy Claxton of Hofstra University. Another role player, but an interesting one. Before his NBA career, Craig Speedy Claxton played college basketball for Hofstra University. He led the Flying Dutchman to the American East Championship in 2001 and was named the American East Player of the Year twice. So he was drafted by Philadelphia, but spent the best years of his career in San Antonio. His most notable achievement was when he played a big role in the Spurs championship win in 03, scoring 13 buckets in the series clinching game six victory. Quote, Speedy was awesome all series long. Whenever we called on him, he was always ready. End quote. In 2021, Claxton was hired as the head coach of the Hofstra University men's basketball team. And in the 2022 through 2023 season, he led the team to the CAA regular season title and was named the CAA coach of the year. Good for you, Chief. The Toronto Raptors select Morris Peterson from Michigan State University. You definitely know Morris Peterson. What? Name's not ringing a bell? Okay, just check out this play against the Wizards. Now will the Wizards foul down the floor. And it's a deflection by Ruffin. And the play continues. Peterson got it! I don't believe it! I don't believe it! But there's definitely more to his career than that 10 second clip. Peterson played college basketball for Michigan State University, where he helped lead the Spartans to the NCAA title in the 1999 through 2000 season. He was named the Big Ten Player of the Year and a first time All Big Ten player. After being drafted, Peterson was a starter for the Raptors in his first three seasons. Peterson stayed with the team until 2007. He was then traded to the New Orleans Hornets, then the Oklahoma City Thunder before ending up in Charlotte. 
However, he was waived before playing a single game for the Bobcats. After basketball, he pursued a career in broadcasting and worked as an analyst for TSN, a sports network in Canada. From 2015 to 2017, he covered the Toronto Raptors games with the rest of the TSN broadcast team. He also opened a sports bar near his hometown of Flint, Michigan. And in 2019, Peterson was inducted into the Michigan Sports Hall of Fame. The New York Knicks select Donnell Harvey from the University of Florida. In high school, Donnell was him. He was named the National High School Player of the Year in 1999 and even received comparisons to Dennis Rodman. Harvey then went on to play college basketball for the University of Florida, where he played for one season before entering the NBA draft. In the NBA, Harvey played for numerous teams, including the Mavs, Nuggets, Suns, and Magic. If you look at his stats, you can see that his game just didn't work in the NBA. He then went on to play for various international teams in Greece, Turkey, and the Philippines. Outside of basketball, he's trying to change the world though. In an effort to help young people, Harvey founded the Reconstructing Youth Foundation. The nonprofit is focused on youth and community development in Southwest Georgia. In an interview with Albany Herald, Donald said, quote, I've been fortunate enough to travel with teams to Europe, Asia, and see different parts of the world. The kids I'm working with haven't had that chance, but I'm trying to help them see there's a big world out there and help them learn how to succeed in that big world, end quote. The Utah Jazz select Deshaun Stevenson from Washington Union High School in California. Back in Eastern California, Stevenson was a legend. During high school, his team won a state championship in his junior year, where he averaged out, and hear me out on this, 30 points, 9 rebounds, and 6 assists. And for that performance, he was named to the McDonald's All-American team. In the NBA, he wasn't that hot as shown by his stats here. He was a good role player who played for multiple teams. However, in 2011, his role playing efforts with the Mavericks turned into his one and only championship where the Heatles had their infamous meltdown. Shockingly, after the win, Stevenson was arrested for public intoxication just two days after he won the championship. However, Stevenson had faced much bigger charges earlier in his career. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that either. After a three year break from competitive basketball, he joined the Big Three League, where he found success as a three point shooter and playmaker. In 2017, he played for the Power, and a year later, he was rewarded when the Ball Hogs named Stevenson as a co-captain. He held the league with 32 points, which was nearly twice as many as the second best player. The Chicago Bulls select Dalibor Bogaric. Now we reach the section of the draft I'd like to call dudes with short careers whose names I can't pronounce. Let's start with our first contestant, Dalibor Bogaric. Dalibor was a promising Croatian player who won the gold medal at the 1996 FIBA Europe U18 Championship with the junior national team. In the past, Bulls had luck with Croatian players like Tony Kukoc, so selecting someone this deep in the draft was worth the risk. The Bulls selected Dalibor as the 24th overall pick. However, he never had a significant impact in the NBA. In three seasons, he played less than 100 games with not much success. The Phoenix Suns select Yakovos Sakalidis from Athens, Greece. Jake began his professional basketball career in 96 with a Greek club in Athens, where he achieved notable success. And so the Suns picked him up with the 25th pick. He played for the Suns, Grizzlies, and Rockets over the next seven seasons before returning to Greece and playing for the EuroLeague club Olympiasos, I think that's how you say it, in 2007. Draft, the Denver Nuggets select Mamadou Njai. Mamadou Ndiaye is a big human being. At the time he was drafted, he stood at 7 feet and weighed 255 pounds. Also, with Shaq dominating at the time, the league loved the big man. However, his NBA career left something to be desired. Ndiaye only played in a total of 69 NBA games, and he never played in more than 30 games in a season, and so he was out of the league by 2005. After his playing days were over, Mamadou, like many other former athletes, turned to coaching. Currently, he's working as an assistant coach for the men's team at the University of Central Florida. The Indiana Pacers select Primoz Brezic. Rounding up our contest of players' names who I can't pronounce, we have Primo Brezic, a 7'1 Slovenian center who played in the NBA for eight seasons. He spent three years with the Pacers before being picked up by the Bobcats in the 2004 expansion draft. His most successful season came with the Bobcats, averaging around 13 points and seven rebounds per game. But the Slovenian center really didn't do much after that, playing limited minutes on the Pistons, Raptors, 76ers, and Bucks throughout his career. He would go on to represent the Slovenian national team in the international competitions, including Eurobasket and the FIBA World Cup. The same year he retired, Primoz accepted a position as the international scout with the Cleveland Cavaliers. He's also contributing to the development of basketball in his home country. With multiple coaches from Croatia, Italy, and Slovenia, Brezic has hosted an international basketball camp for the last 12 years. The Portland Trailblazers select Eric Barkley from St. John's University. Eric Barkley, 
and no relation to Charles Barkley, was a great high school player who played alongside future NBA players like Lamar Odom, Ron Artest, and Elton Brand. In college, he played with Artest for St. John's, leading the team to the Elite Eight in the 1999 NCAA tournament. However, Barkley's NBA career only lasted two years, during which he played in 27 games. Eric's post-NBA life wasn't perfect either. In 2014, he was arrested after allegedly attacking a father after his son's basketball game. Then his 14-year-old stepson accused him of physically attacking him a year later. Yeah, we'll end on that. The Los Angeles Lakers select Mark Madsen of Stanford University. Madsen played college basketball at Stanford University, where he was a two-time All-American and helped the team reach the Final Four in 1998. He was selected by the Lakers and went on to win two NBA championships with the team. But the best part of his story was his unique relationship with Shaq. We started a bond. We started a bond and he ended up taking me car shopping later, taking me, you know, to try to replace my wardrobe in LA because <laughs> I, I didn't really have the right wardrobe for LA. <laughs> Shaq's just one of the most generous human beings you'll ever come across in your life. Shaq admired Manson's character, particularly his decision to avoid typical rookie behaviors like partying and spending extravagantly. When asked about his former teammate, Shaq said, Mad Dog was the purest NBA guy I've ever met. After LA, he spent the next six years playing for the Timberwolves, mostly riding the bench. After retiring as a player, Madsen enrolled in the Stanford Graduate School and got his master's degree in public management. After finishing school, Mad Dog began his coaching career. He started as an assistant coach for teams like the Utah Flash and the LA Defenders of the D-League. Last year, Mark was hired as the head coach of the California Golden Bears, a college team that in the past included such NBA legends like Kevin Johnson and Jason Kidd. And of course, he received a special congratulations from Shaq. And even though you're a head coach, Mark Madsen, you're still my rookie. Love you, Mark. Excuse me, mad dog. The Los Angeles Clippers select Marco Jaric. Marco Yarich played in the EuroLeague with a couple of Italian clubs, and in 2000 and 2001, Yarich became the first player to ever win back-to-back -back Italian League championships on two separate teams. In the NBA, he played for the Clippers, Timberwolves, and Grizzlies, averaging pedestrian stats in his career. Yarich also had a brief NBA comeback attempt with the Chicago Bulls and the Brooklyn Nets in 2013, but retired soon after. He represented the senior FR Yugoslavian national basketball team, winning gold medals at the 2001 EuroBasket and the 2002 FIBA World Championship, and also also played with the senior Serbian national basketball team at the 07 Eurobasket. But his biggest accomplishment? Probably marrying the Brazilian supermodel Adriana Lima. The Miami Heat select Eddie House. Eddie House is a well-known name for all the Celtics fans out there. In college, Eddie attended Arizona State University on a full-ride scholarship and is the all-time scoring leader at the school with 2,044 points in his career. And trust me, the ASU fans still remember his 61-point masterpiece against Cal. In the NBA, he played for nine different teams and was known around the league for his somewhat streaky three-point shooting. But he will always be remembered as the backup guard for the Boston Celtics, who played a crucial role in the team's 2008 NBA Finals victory. He re-signed with the Celtics in 08 and broke Danny Ainge's team record for the best three-point percentage in a season, shooting 44.4% for the entire season. The former Celtic has found success as an analyst for NBC Sports Boston, and House has been well-received by viewers, as he has great chemistry with fellow analysts Brian Scalabrini and Kendrick Perkins. Considering they're his former teammates, it's not surprising. But hold up, hold up. This is not his first experience with television. House has also done some work with FSI, Fox, and ESPN. The Milwaukee Bucks select Michael Redd. Michael Redd, the 43rd overall pick in the NBA draft, emerged as one of the most thrilling shooting guards of the 2000s. After a modest rookie season, he increased his average to 11.4 points per game in his second season, and broke an NBA record with eight three-pointers in one quarter in 2002. In the 2003 through 2004 season, that's where he started to turn up. He turned his average to 21.7 points per game and made his lone all-star appearance, just like Kenyon Martin and Jamal McGlory. In 2005, Red signed a six-year, $91 million contract with the Milwaukee Bucks peaking in the 07 season with an average of 26.7 points and a Bucks single game record of 57 points. He was also a part of the gold winning Redeem team at the 2008 Beijing Olympics alongside the goats of the game. However, Red's career was hampered by knee injuries, leading to shortened seasons and then eventually a final hoorah with the Suns in the 2011 through 2012 season before retiring. Post MBA, he joined Advantage Sports Tech Fund, contributing his leadership skills to the firm's business development and marketing. Red's passion for sports tech and supporting entrepreneurs also led him to found his own investment firm, 22 Ventures, helping over 100 companies secure venture capital. Red has said that his new career fits his competitive nature perfectly and he's fully committed to it. The Detroit Pistons select Brian Cardinal. The janitor, the custodian, 
Brian Cardinal from the University of Purdue. He played for the university from 96 to 2000, starting all four years and helping the team make the NCAA tournament. He was known for his hustle and determination, earning the nickname The Custodian for his ability to dive for loose balls. Pause. Cardinal was another journeyman, playing for six different teams in his career. But this journeyman would be rewarded, as Brian won an NBA championship with the Mavericks in 2011. In retirement, Cardinal learned that he had other talent besides basketball, the ability to speak. To this day, he travels around the country holding motivational speeches. And Brian's son, Bryson, is currently playing for the Guerin Catholic High School. And while he's not on the radar of any NBA scout, you never know, being an underdog is in his blood. Golden State Warriors select Chris Porter. In college, Porter was named SEC Player of the Year in his junior season at Auburn and was selected to the All-American team. But his college career was compromised when he was suspended for accepting money from an agent. Porter was selected by the Warriors in 2000. He had a solid rookie season with about 8 points and 3 rebounds per game. But off-court issues and drug charges led to his downfall in the NBA. He would never played in the NBA after his rookie season. After his NBA career, Porter played for various teams in different leagues, including the CBA, USBL, Italy, Portugal, China, and the Philippines. In 2015, he helped Fort Wayne win the D-League championship title. And not so different from before, the same year his contract was terminated due to a violation of the league's drug policy. Unfortunately, his legal problems didn't stop after his basketball career was done. In 2020, he was arrested for driving under the influence and was reportedly to be found in possession of marijuana. The following year, Porter was arrested on first degree SA charges. So there you have it, every important player from the 2000 draft. And what did we learn? Was this the worst draft in NBA history? Wow, there was some talent here. I mean, we could have gone. Yeah, this was probably the worst draft. While guys like Kenya Martin, Jamal Crawford, Michael Redd, and Hita Turkoglu had good careers, a vast majority of lottery picks didn't pan out or got seriously injured. Of 58 selected players, 43 failed to play a decade, and eight never even played in the league. But you know what the weird thing is, guys? Exactly 10 years later, it looks like the same exact thing is happening in the 2010 NBA draft. Currently in the league, only a handful of people are left from the draft. Why is that? Well, don't worry, because I can get all of that answered for you in this video showing right here.